These are very expensive linens. I bet they're very strong. I don't need to lug this around with me. I don't think going through that would help. Either he's innocent, in which case I'd be grossly invading his privacy, or he's guilty and surely wouldn't be daft enough to leave any evidence in his luggage. I copied the contents into my notebook. It's a marble sculpture of an elephant. I find this painting particularly bland. I transcribe the pertinent passages in my notebook.
I guess Owen made sure no clocks in the house are working. This one is stopped. It's modern. I don't like it personally, although I suppose it fits in with the rest of the house. A radiator. You can't have enough of them, really. I copied the contents into my notebook. I'd almost swear I recognize that chap. Does he have the eyes of a killer? I think I recognize this lady. Perhaps she owned the house in the past. Who knows? She may still. I copied the contents into my notebook. That's an interesting clock. A shame it doesn't seem to work. I copied the contents into my notebook. This is a fairly sparse makeup case. Vera isn't the type to use much makeup, though. Toiletries. Nothing of interest that I can see. Various toiletries. Nothing of interest that I can see. This bears a closer look.
It would be incredibly improper for me to go through a lady's luggage. I won't do it. I copied the contents into my notebook. I see nothing remarkable. This is quite a makeup supply. Emily must be more concerned with aging than she lets on. I copied the contents into my notebook. It appears to be a portrait of the general. Must be quite old. He's standing with a very young woman. It's signed, To John, My Husband, Leslie. Let me examine this further. I copied the contents into my notebook. Thank you. 
This bears a closer look. Ah, with my ear against the door, the conversation becomes quite clear. Wine, doctor? No, thank you, Rogers. I never touch alcohol. Except for sterilizing wounds or instruments, of course. I tried to collect some apples from an orchard on the island, but a bee stung me. I'm afraid I dropped the basket and ran. No need to apologize. I myself am dreadfully allergic to bees, wasps, hornets, I'm sorry to hear there are bees here. Oh, you must take care. There's all sorts of those bee house things. What do you call it? An apiary. Oh, I thought that was for monkeys. Ethel. Miss Claythorne, we've never met, but I do seem to recall your name. Oh? Yes. From when I stayed at that stuffy old hotel near St. Treadney. Do you know it? No. No, I don't think so. Really? How extraordinary. I was so sure. Maricott says he's not Fred Fane, but his brother. It may well be, but he bears watching. Seems like such a nice man. They said the same thing about Stevenson, the child murderer. I confess I've never met our host, Mr. Owen. What kind of a man is he? Rogers? We haven't seen the Owens either, sir. We were only engaged a week ago by letter and asked to make the house ready. So no one has actually met the Owens. How extraordinary. I, for one, will have some sharp questions for the Owens when they do arrive. Aha! With my ear against the door, the conversation becomes quite clear. Did anyone else see the poem over the fireplace? Ten little sailor boys. Yes, I saw it. And here before us as the centerpiece of our table are the ten little sailor boys themselves, all looking correct and polished. I like a neat and tidy house, Your Honor. Robson, the man who built this house, was a sailor. Perhaps Mr. Owen inherited them from him. Another question for Mr. Owen. As I remember, the rhyme was about soldier boys. Highly inappropriate, as I recall. There are many variations. You seem to know quite a bit about it, Miss Claythorne. I... I was a governess before seeking secretarial work. Governesses spend a lot of time with nursery rhymes. All gratuitously gruesome, if you ask me. So much violence in the world today. Sometimes violence is necessary, Miss Brent. There speaks a soldier for you. A realist, Miss Brent, not a dreamer. If action needs to be taken, I, for one, am fully prepared to take it. How does the famous rhyme go, Miss Clayton? Must we harp on this topic at dinner? Miss Brent may be right, Mr. Marston. The rhyme is a bit gruesome. It's there over the fireplace in the parlour if you care to have a look later. If you think so. Excellent meal, Rogers. My compliments to both you and your good woman. You've done your employers proud. Thank you, sir, ladies and gentlemen. Most gratifying, I'm sure. After dinner drinks will be served in the front parlor. Ladies and gentlemen, silence please. This is your host, UN Owen. You are charged with the following indictments. Edward George Armstrong, that you did upon the 14th day of March 1925, caused the death of Louisa Mary Cleese.
is Emily Caroline Brent, that upon the 5th of November 1931, you were responsible for the death of Beatrice Taylor, William Henry Bloor, that you brought about the death of James Stephen Landor on October 10th, 1928, Vera Elizabeth Claythorne, that on the 11th day of August 1935, you killed Cyril Ogilvie Hamilton. Philip Lombard, that upon a date in February 1932, you were guilty of the death of 21 men, members of an East African tribe. John Gordon Mackenzie, that on the 4th of January 1917, you deliberately sent your wife's lover, Arthur Richmond, to his death. Anthony James Marston, that upon the 14th day of November last, you were guilty of the murder of John and Lucy Combs, Thomas Rogers, and Ethel Rogers, that on the 6th of May 1929, you brought about the death of Jennifer Brady, Lawrence John Wargrave, that upon the 10th day of June 1934, you were guilty of the murder of Edward Seaton. Prisoners at the bar, have you anything to say in your defense? Doctor, I only fainted, Rogers. I'm sure she'll be fine. Narricot, will you get my bag from my room? Yes, of course. Stout fellow, master, in a moment I'll want help to get her to her room. Of course. Behind the kitchen, is it, Rogers? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You can use that door. Perhaps we can talk later. For now, I must see to my patient. Thank you, Mr. Narricot. I am in your debt.
Perhaps we can talk later. For now, I must see to my patient. Interesting painting. Birds don't appeal to me, but someone here certainly fancies them. Ten little sailor boys. Charming. Now, Rogers, tell us about that extraordinary voice. It was Mr. Owen, sir. In his letter, he wrote to me to put it on the gramophone once you were all settled in here after dinner. That was Mr. Owen's voice? You doubt that it was? No, no, no. I thought I recognized it. I'm sure I'm mistaken. A disgraceful practical joke. You think it was a joke? What else could it be? I will need to hear more evidence before offering an opinion. Mr. Marston and I carried Mrs. Rogers to her room. I gave her a mild sedative. She's resting comfortably. Whoever it was on that recording, that person knows or has taken the trouble to find out a good deal about us all. He was correct about Seton. I presided at the trial, but all I did was execute a guilty man. I remember the case. As I recall, there was some talk. Happily, guilt and innocence are decided by those of us qualified to make a judgment, not by gossip. Of course, there is one omission in that recording. Mr. Narricot, of course. Although to hear Mr. Bloor tell it, he might have earned a place on that list had Mr. Owen been so inclined. It's locked fast. This could use a closer look. I wonder what's recorded on this side. I won't do that. Perhaps another time. I won't do that. I'm pleased to see at least one of you has thought to turn the record over. Any good house party should include party games. This weekend is no exception. I have devised several little games of the mind to challenge your wits, and I hope you find the rewards for each to be worth the effort. You'll have to discover my little amusements on your own, however. I've scattered them all over this delightful island retreat. I hope that you will find them suitably entertaining. 